Has your company promised some shares to its directors for their work or service? Or did you offer some cash bonus where amount depends on the movement of your own share price? Well, then you're welcome to watch the summary of IFRS 2 share-based payment that exactly specifies the rules for similar transactions. I'm Sylvia of IFRSbox.com and I help people understand and simplify IFRS. I have created two courses and lots of free IFRS materials, so you're welcome to check them at IFRSbox.com. The objective of IFRS 2 is to specify the financial reporting by an entity when it undertakes a share-based payment transaction, so the entity shall reflect the effect of this transaction in its profit or loss or statement of financial position. So what is a share-based payment transaction? Well, it is a transaction in which the entity receives goods or services from the suppliers of those goods or services, including an employee, in a share-based payment arrangement and we'll define it in a minute. So if this is the case, then the entity must apply IFRS 2 for reporting this share-based arrangement. Share-based payment transaction is also a transaction in which the entity incurs an obligation to settle the transaction with the supplier in a share-based payment arrangement when another group entity receives those goods or services. So here, another group company receives the goods or services, but if the liability to pay for them by share-based payment arrangement is transferred to an entity, then IFRS 2 applies to the entity that needs to pay. Share-based arrangement is an agreement between the entity and another party, supplier or anyone else, that entitles the other party to receive either cash or other assets for the amounts that are based on the price or value of entity's equity instruments. So in this case, supplier gets paid for its goods or services by cash, but the amount of cash is determined with reference to entity's equity instrument's price, like share price. These transactions are called cash settled. The other party or the supplier can also be paid by equity instruments of the entity, including shares or share options. This is a common way to remunerate some employees of big companies. They receive share options in return for their work for the company. And these transactions are called equity settled. It is very important to determine whether we are dealing with cash settled or equity settled transaction because the accounting treatment depends on it. There could be also some vesting conditions. And these are some service or performance conditions that the other party must fulfill before being entitled to share-based payment. For example, directors might be entitled to receive the shares of the company after five years of their service. These five years are a vesting condition. Now, let's take a look at how we shall recognize the share-based payment transactions. The first question is when to recognize share-based payment transaction. An entity shall recognize goods received when they are delivered or obtained by the entity, or if it relates to services, then the recognition occurs as the services are provided. Another question is how to recognize a transaction. Well, that depends on the type. If the transaction is cash settled, or an entity pays in cash based on the price or value of its equity instruments, then it is necessary to recognize the services or goods received. So we need to debit either assets, for example, inventories or property plan and equipment, or expenses, and corresponding credit is recognized as a liability. If the transaction is equity settled, then the debit entry is the same and the corresponding credit is recognized as an equity. So these are the basic recognition criteria and let's break them down more specifically in line with various types of transactions. Let's take a look at equity settled share based payment transactions first. In these transactions, an entity acquires certain goods or services from the supplier, including employee, and pays for these services with some own equity instruments such as shares or share options or anything similar. How shall we measure such a transaction? The basic rule is to measure the amount of goods or services received and corresponding share-based payment at fair value of goods or services received at the receipt date. Well, this approach is common when an entity acquires certain goods or services from the third parties where it is possible to determine the fair value of goods or services. However, 
Entities very often provide share-based payments as a part of some remuneration package to their employees. And in such a case, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to determine the fair value of services received from employees. Therefore, IFRS 2 requires using the fair value of equity instruments granted instead. So, instead of determining the fair value of employee services, an entity should estimate the fair value of its own equity instruments granted. IFRS 2 provides the whole guidance on how to do it. And basically, this fair value is estimated at the grant date, not at the receipt date, as these remunerations are usually provided in exchange for the employee's service over some period. Well, there's one more thing to bear in mind. Vesting conditions, or whether share-based payment is vested or not. So, if these benefits are not vested, it means they are granted immediately and the counterparty is not required to complete some specified period before becoming entitled to those equity instruments. Well, in this case, IFRS 2 sees these remuneration as in return for past service and therefore an entity shall recognize the services received in full at the grand date with the corresponding increase in equity. However, if these benefits are vested, the situation is different. In such a case, a counterparty is required to complete a specified period of service. For example, employee gets 100 shares of his employer after three years of service. IFRS 2 regards these shares to be provided for the future service over the vesting period, and therefore these services are recognized over the vesting period with the corresponding increase in equity. So, vesting conditions are not reflected in the fair value of one share granted. Instead, they are reflected in a number of shares that an entity needs to recognize each year over a vesting period. Let me also add that IFRS 2 prohibits subsequent adjustments to total equity after vesting date, but it allows transfers within individual equity components. If, for example, some share options are not exercised, an entity does not reverse share option rights, but adjust this situation as a transfer within equity. Let's take a look at cash settled share-based payment transactions. In these transactions, an entity acquires certain goods or services from the supplier, including employees, and pays for these services with cash or other assets in amount determined by the reference to own equity instruments, for example, share appreciation rights, where employee gets payment based on the entity's share price increase, or rights to mandatory redeemable shares. As these transactions are typical and common in remuneration of employees, let's focus on measurement of share appreciation rights. As this is cash settled transaction, the credit side of the entry goes to liabilities, not equity, but we have mentioned that. This liability shall be measured at its fair value on initial recognition, and the fair value of liabilities from share appreciation rights shall be determined by the application of option pricing model, taking into account the specific conditions. The liability shall be remeasured at each reporting date until settled, so this is a bit different from equity settled share based payment transactions. Of course, Share appreciation rights can be both vested and non-vested, and here the rules are similar to equity settled share-based payment transactions. If they are not vested or employees are entitled to them without further conditions, then an entity shall recognize them fully at the grant date. And if these payments are vested and certain conditions or further period of service is required before entitlement, then they shall be recognized over the period of vesting. The standard IFRS 2 deals also with other issues related to share-based payments, such as modifications, cancellation and settlement. IFRS 2 also requires certain disclosures and provides the guidance on measurement of share-based payment transactions. So that was the short summary of IFRS 2. Thank you for watching the video and if you want to take your IFRS knowledge a little deeper, Please check out our free IFRS mini course at ifrsbox.com and you'll also receive the ebook top 7 IFRS mistakes and short guide to IFRS. Thanks again and have a nice day.